Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. My name is Kevin, and I research SpaceX current events from all around the internet and compile them into one convenient location just for you. Today, our focus is on the Mark II Starship and Starship in general, as well as Pad 39A. We'll debrief the CRS-18 mission to the International Space Station that happened on Thursday, and we'll briefly mention the Crew Dragon. But of course, we're gonna start things off with Starhopper, so let's get started. Man, it's been a few crazy days, am I right? In the last three days, I've done three SpaceX in the news videos and five live videos. And it's only gonna get crazier now that Starhopper has awakened. And speaking of Starhopper, and just so we're on the same page, let's go ahead and take one more look at that first hop. Using a single Raptor engine, the vehicle rose to 20 meters before making a soft touchdown. And these shots were filmed by SpaceX and released by Elon on Twitter. Now, everyone filming the event got excellent close-up shots. However, Austin Barnard shared some video of the launch from a couple miles distance. And because of him, I was able to roughly estimate how high an apogee of 200 meters will look from this distance. From this far away, this block is about the size of Hopper, and Hopper is about 20 meters tall. So I just stacked 10 of these blocks on top of each other, and this is the altitude I ended at. So it should be a good show, especially since the next hop's supposed to happen during daylight hours. And do you remember the brush fire that Star Hopper ignited? Well, that lasted well into the next day. I was told by local residents that SpaceX didn't have the fire under control until about 1 p.m. Approximately 100 acres of wildlife refuge was affected. My own personal theory from the other night as we watched the fire burn after the hop was that those in charge were letting the fire burn deliberately so they wouldn't have to deal with it a second time. And the locals did seem to agree with me, but claimed the fire got away from SpaceX because their response team wasn't equipped for success. Apparently one fire truck and primitive equipment doesn't cut it. One resident told me that both outside and inside their house was completely covered in soot after the launch, and that the smells of the fire was unbearable and causing respiratory problems. However, they insist that SpaceX is not to blame and that instead the blame for the fires lies with the government officials. Because I've been told that they tied SpaceX's hands behind their back when SpaceX originally wanted to prevent this from happening, long before this hop event. But now that Starhopper has flown, Elon's gonna give his presentation on Starship in Boca Chica, where he will update us all on the new developments and new designs of Starship Super Heavy. He gives these presentations every year, and we've already been given a sneak peek on what changes are coming. For starters, the Super Heavy booster now has 35 Raptor engines. Add the six Starship engines, and you get a total of 41. But Elon's says he would still like one more. However, he then tweeted that the 37 configuration would place six under the landing legs. So I guess Super Heavy, like Starship, will have different model numbers depending on the task at hand. And he seemed to support that logic with his final tweet that the giant booster will probably have slots for up to 37 engines, but can decontent as needed. How can any launch pad withstand the heat of 37 Raptor engines, you may be asking yourself? Well, Elon must have it figured out because he has already begun building the launch structure off-site in steel subsections. It will be attached to the other side of Pad 39 a's launch tower. Furthermore, it seems as though SpaceX has done away with the sweaty heat shield design for something a little bit more basic, ceramic tiles. Elon tweeting, testing a possible Starship windward side ceramic tile, maximizing emissivity is best for conductive particle heating. Nice thing about steel is that tiles can be very thin, unlike carbon fiber or aluminum airframe. The Mark II Starship prototype is being built in Cocoa, Florida, alongside a new structure that has begun to take shape. And it looks like an assembly building or a hangar, just maybe for the first super heavy booster. Moving on, Starhopper isn't the only SpaceX vehicle to launch lately. The very same day, CRS-18, a resupply mission to the International Space Station, lifted off from Cape Canaveral carrying the Cargo Dragon capsule. The capsule was carrying a bunch of science experiments, and even some of those experimental heat shields Elon just told us about. The flight was a success despite shoddy weather, and the booster made a bullseye landing on landing zone 1. It also broke several personal bests for SpaceX. This was the first used Block 5 booster that NASA paid for, and the third time this Cargo Dragon capsule went to space. And finally, Elon was recently interviewed by CNBC, where we learned when Demo 2, the first crewed mission of Crew Dragon, could take place. So to launch crew to the space station? Crew to the space. My, my guess is about six months. Well, that's all I have for you guys this week. It's been fun. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, Godspeed. Big shout out and thank you to all my cloud licking patrons. If it wasn't for them, this show would not be what it is today. And if you enjoy watching these videos, please consider becoming a patron yourself. For as little as $1, you can get access to more cloud licking content. There's a link in the description. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode and give this video a like. God bless you.